Hello, everyone. Uh, and I want to welcome you all to Lewis and Clark uh, College for the fall semester 2020. My name is John Hancock. I am the Associate Dean of Students for Health and Wellness. Uh, I also am the Chief Psychologist. I am a psychologist by training, uh, and I oversee health and wellness services here at the college. We're excited to have so many of you on campus this fall. And we're also excited to have some of you at a distance this fall. We wish you all could be with us uh, physically, but I know that my staff and I will be wor working very hard to provide the health and wellness support that all of you need uh, as you uh, embark upon this very interesting journey together. Um, the title of our session today is Staying he Healthy at LC in the Time of COVID. Um, I'm going to speak for a little bit here, and then we will rotate through some of the other uh, key leadership people on my wellness team. And by the time we're done in uh, 40 minutes, we will uh, have oriented you to some of the key resources you'll need to stay healthy on campus this year. Uh, next slide, Henry. So uh, we have what we call at Lewis and Clark our Pioneer Wellness Card. Our Pioneer Wellness Card is a small uh, business side card that we often give, give out physically to students. Um, uh, in this year, because we really don't want to be uh, passing around uh, physical things any more than needed, we've created a virtual Pioneer Wellness Card. So what I'd like to encourage you all to do is take out, if, if you have a camera on your phone, I know many of you have that, I'd encourage you to take that out now and, and do your best to take a picture of this particular slide. Now, all these slides will be available on our website after today's program, but this is your virtual Pioneer Wellness Card uh, this slide shows you the different resources that are available to you during daytime hours for your health and for your safety. Um, and, uh, and so I'm going to give you a second to just uh, uh, take a picture of the slide. As we talk today, uh, different of the speakers here will be talking about different of these resources. So we'll call, cover these resources uh, in detail. Uh, but I want you to get a picture of this for your phone because that way anytime uh, you need a resource, all you need to do is open the pictures on your phone and you can find the picture of that resource. Um, and Henry, if you'd advance the slide. Um, on this particular slide, we talk about after hours and off-campus resources. So we're really proud of the after hours support we provide Lewis and Clark. Uh, for example, there's campus safety emergency on here, that's 24-7. Uh, whenever the health service is closed, we have a nurse line. Whenever the counseling service is closed, we have a crisis counseling service, and there are some other resources as well. So please take a picture of this on your phone as well. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, taking pictures of slides with your phones online will work. Uh, it worked on mine when I tested it just a little bit ago, uh, and then you'll have this for your future reference. I did wanna say one thing about call us, calling campus safety. If, should you ever experience an emergency this year, and we certainly hope you don't, but if you ever do, um, uh, when an ambulance responds to campus, uh, sometimes they don't know. Uh, campus can be kind of a little bit confusing for people who aren't familiar with it and where all the buildings are. So what we recommend is that uh, if you have an emergency on campus and you need you know, emergency medical support, please call campus safety first at that 768-7777 number. Uh, and then they will call 911. Now, if you get in a situation where seconds count and you really feel like you need to call 911 first, that's okay. But be sure you call campus safety immediately afterwards because they can be the ones guiding uh, any emergency medical services to you on campus, okay? So that's just a good thing to remember uh, as we head into the year. So hopefully you've taken pictures of that. And Henry, if you'd advance to the next slide. So um, this is a different year. We are in the time of COVID. So, uh, how do we get through this together? How do we all get through this together? There are a lot of things that we all need to be doing. Um, you've been exposed to many of those through educational modules, through attestation forms, through pledges, through all the different messaging of the media and other things. Uh, but I think we've got some new ideas for you uh, and we'll talk about from a health and wellness perspective. So we're gonna really the, the focus on our our, our, our talk today is how do we get through this all together? And I want to start with this question about what is the real risk? So uh, uh, Henry, if you'll advance the slide, please. So there's a, a new dashboard that we've put together and I've listed the address of that dashboard right here. Uh, Melissa is uh, on our health and health promotion and wellness team. 
And this is on the Health Promotion and Wellness website. And on this dashboard, you can find, for example, the number of uh, individuals we've tested on campus, uh, the number of uh, positive uh, test results for COVID that we've had. Uh, we will be reporting the impact on campus of positive cases. So this is a good uh, dashboard for you to keep access to and check uh, now and again to see sort of how we're doing in terms of cases on campus. We're going to have COVID cases on campus this year and we're prepared for those. We have a robust medical service. We've got quarantine and isolation housing. We've got a lot of good testing programs in place. So, uh, but this is the place we'll be doing the reporting and so I wanted to make you aware of that. It might interest you to know that as of a little bit earlier today, uh, we had tested 176 individuals in our health service uh, in the last two weeks as part of uh, the entry screening, the sort of pre-entry screening. Um, most all students will, get, will get, also get some entry screening next week um, with just a few exceptions. Um, but um, uh, in the last week or two, we've done 176 tests. We've had one positive result. Uh, that positive result was reported very recently. We're going to get po that posted on our website tonight, uh, so, so you'll see it there. But we're one for 176, which does lead us to a very low positivity rate at this point. But we'll keep uh, reporting that positivity rate as the semester unfolds, as well as any positive cases that we detect. Uh, next slide, Henry. So there are lots of ways we're working to keep folks uh, safe and healthy. We're working to support the most vulnerable among us, those with pre-existing health conditions, uh, other risk factors that put them especially at risk. Uh, we've been doing uh, a lot of work to uh, both prepare for and prevent uh, the disease spread on campus, uh, looking at things like self-monitoring and surveillance. Uh, Margaret will be talking about our medical consultation services. We've, I've talked a little bit about testing. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, and then including our isolation, quarantine, case management, and contact tracing program. So we got a lot going on to support your health and well-being. Next slide, Henry. So uh, if you happen to be one of those individuals who is at higher risk of developing severe illness for COVID-19, we really want you to be in touch with us. So if you have an underlying health condition, um, if you're immunocompromised, um, there is a, a, on the CDC website, there is a, uh, uh, a list of, of, of categories that people are at higher risk. Um, we encourage you to, to be familiar with that list. And if, you're, if you are one of those people who are at higher risk, please consider contacting our health service staff. And you can see their email on this slide. And uh, please consider uh, also accessing student support services staff about your academic needs, because we wanna be sure that you have the support you need uh, to stay as safe as possible this semester. Next slide, Henry. So um, the next sort of theme to talk about here a little bit, uh, you'll bear with me while I do some scrolling through my own slides here, is uh, preparation and prevention. Really hope you all brought your own reusable thermometers with you. Uh, if not, please acquire one as soon as you can. Same is true for things like other supplies you might need, like fever reducing medication, masks, and all those other supplies that were on the packing list that was sent to you as part of your NSO list. Um, so, um, um, you know, none of us, none of us ever know exactly what the future holds for us with about to COVID. And I'll talk about that in a second. So it's important to be prepared. Um, also, it's important to do a, a symptom self check every day. And I'll explain why that's so important here in just a second. Henry, could you advance the slides? So, um, I think it's really easy, and I've heard people say this, well, you know, I don't have COVID, um, it's just a cough. I don't have COVID, it's just a headache. I don't have COVID, it's just a sore throat. I don't have COVID, it's just a runny nose, or it's just nausea, or it's just vomiting, or I've had a bit of diarrhea, but it's not COVID. Um, Henry, if you could advance the slide, please. So these are some really important stats that I want you all to be aware of. And maybe you've seen them before, I hope you have, but in, if you haven't, I wanna let you know now. So here's what we know, and there's still a lot we're learning about COVID, but about 40% of COVID cases are asymptomatic. You're not gonna know that you're infected because you have no symptoms at all. And about 50% of disease transmission happens before the onset of symptoms. So um, 
So what that means is that um, you know we might be we might be contagious with COVID, and we wouldn't know it because we're asymptomatic, or we might have not have symptoms yet, or we might just have one symptom like a runny nose or a headache or fatigue or a cough or something like that. So uh, it's incumbent on us all uh, to use social distancing and masks and good hand hygiene. What, I've, what I tell my staff here uh, in wellness services is, and, and also this other staff that I work with in the Division of Student Life and across the college really, is that if we all ask, if we all act this year, as if we are contagious at any given moment, and as if other people are contagious in any given moment, and we, we enact that by keeping our six feet social distance and wearing our masks and washing our hands and using hand sanitizer, these kind of basics, right? We can prevent a whole lot of these, a disease transmission, uh, but, but it doesn't work if you only socially distance and only wear a mask if you feel like you have a symptom, right? because so many cases are asymptomatic and because so much of disease transmission happens before the onset of symptoms. So know those symptoms, do your self check within yourself every morning, take your temperature every morning, uh, and if you're feeling any, symptom, uh, any, any, any symptoms at all, uh, then that's the time for self-isolation. I also wanna make a comment on this slide about testing. Um, there's a lot of testing out there. We're gonna have a lot of testing on this sheet. Uh, testing at, at Lewis and Clark this year. Testing is imperfect. Uh, there are false negatives from testing. There are false positives from testing. So uh, false positive be a case there where, you know, the test says you're positive when you're not. There are even higher rates uh, of false negatives. So the test says you're negative when you're not. So we can't rely entirely on testing. Um, and, and we'll talk more about that as the slides go on here. But uh, uh, we want to use those uh, those good measures like social distancing is the key, right, with masks and hand washing. If you ever develop symptoms this year, here's what we want to do. Uh, if you develop symptoms, we want you to follow the guidelines on the Health Promotion website for self-isolation. And there's some really good guidance there. We want you to stay in your room. We want you to report your symptoms on the SCARF form. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Most of you have already, have already filled that out. Um, I'm guessing as part of your check into campus. Uh, within the SCARF form, you can have uh, meals delivered to your room. Uh, that's a link that's embedded in the SCARF form. Um, when you go out of your room, certainly okay to go out of your room to use the bathroom. We want you to mask up, uh, keep your six feet distance at all times, and we want you to get medical consultation uh, via the health service during working hours or from our after hours nurse line after hours. So um, the SCARF form, um, I know that some of you had some challenges uh, accessing that form. It does require a good internet connection. I know there's some Wi-Fi issues this week. There were a couple times when the form was down, but generally it's been available, and I hope that all of you have been able to access it successfully. So you do access that form through our health information portal. Um, there's a little, bit of a, a, a little bit of a thing I wanna correct on this particular slide. So it says we want you to encourage to log your status there each day. I apologize for the word there being misspelled. I'm usually a very good speller, but I was in a hurry when I put this slide together. Um, so um, the key here is we want you to log your status any day that you have symptoms with this on, on the SCAR form, okay? Um, if you're not having any symptoms, you don't need to log in every day and report that you're having no symptoms. We know you're going to tire of that behavior every day, right? So it's not necessary that you go in, once you've kind of you know, uh, been granted access to campus, it's not necessary that you log and on and monitor, uh, uh, sort of report your not, lack of symptoms every day. However, if you have any symptoms or if you suspect you've been exposed, we absolutely want you to use the SCARF form to report that. That will trigger some staff reaching out to you. And again, that SCARF form is a tool for requesting meal delivery and other support. Next slide, Henry. Uh, we're gonna have testing on campus uh, this year. We're gonna have testing for symptomatic students. Uh, that symptomatic student uh, testing is gonna happen in our on-campus health service. We always want students who are symptomatic to call the health service first. Uh, the current turnaround is about one to two business days 
uh, for this sort of testing. Uh, and uh, we do have rapid, te rapid testing equipment on order. Once that is in place with us, uh, and we're still waiting on that, uh, you know, we hope to offer same day results on testing, but we're not quite there yet. I do wanna let folks know that with the rapid testing, even once it's available to us, um, the rapid testing equipment has a, um, a false negative rate that is a little bit on the high side for what we would like. And so if you come into the health service, once we have the rapid testing in, equipment in place, and if you get a negative, and you have a symptom, because we're testing you because you're symptomatic, and you get a false negative, if you get a negative, um, a negative result from the, f the rapid testing equipment, we're still gonna want you to stay self-isolated until we can get a PCR test on you because that testing will be more definitive that we can trust the negative results. And we are so committed to having uh, all of you healthy and to all of you not spreading any illness on our campus this year that we won't be relying entirely on the rapid testing equipment when it gets an, a negative result. But if it results in a positive result, then we'll help you get uh, into isolation housing as soon as possible. Um, there are also off-campus testing resources for symptomatic individuals. Uh, those resources are available on the Health Service website. There's a COVID resources tab you can access. Uh, and, and if you should ever be diagnosed um, you know, via off-campus testing, maybe you've gone off-campus testing, you've had a positive result, we want you uh, reporting that result through the SCARF form, that form I just described, as soon as possible on weekdays, and then reporting it to campus safety on weekends and then staff will be in touch with you as we can. Next slide, Henry. Uh, so we're also gonna be doing asymptomatic testing. Why? Well, because as I said, about 40% of students who, 40% uh, 40, 40 of individuals uh, who are positive for COVID are asymptomatic. So we will be doing asymptomatic over the course of the semester, um, asymptomatic, excuse me, testing over the course of the semester. We've done some of that in the last two weeks and we're gonna be doing uh, testing of asymptomatic students next week in a big way. Nearly all students will be tested. Look for communication about next week's testing program coming soon. Next slide, Henry. So I wanna say uh, a few words about quarantine. Uh, do be ready for it. We know we're gonna have some positive cases. Uh, the best thing you can be ready for quarantine this year, uh, my, my comments on this slide, the, the sort of uh, slang turn I've, I've developed here is don't queue up your friends. So when a person tests positive for COVID, we, the county will actually initiate contact tracing procedures. And we have some supplemental contact tracing that we'll be hearing, doing here at Lewis and Clark. Now, if we determine that some, a student has stayed uh, within six feet of a, of a positive case for 15 minutes or more, right? Then that is the threshold for going into quarantine. So the way to keep, you know, and since you never know when you might have COVID because you could be asymptomatic, right? The way to not get any of your friends in quarantine, if you will, is to always maintain the six feet distance. Or if you break that six, six feet of distance down, you know, only do it for less than 15 minute intervals, okay? Uh, and that's the way you can be uh, on the safe side in terms of transmitting. And similarly, if you can keep that six feet distance from your friends, uh, and, and if you're gonna break the six feet distance, do it for uh, less than 15 minutes, um, then that's the way that you're not gonna get sort of queued up by your friends in terms of needing to go into quarantine. We wanna keep our quarantine numbers down. It's no fun to get into quarantine. If you wind up in quarantine, uh, the, the, the protocols currently are that you need to be in quarantine for 14 days because it can take 14 days for you to show up as positive. So we don't want anyone to wind up in quarantine this year. Of course, we know some people will, but we ask you to keep that social distance um, and, uh, and so, so that neither you nor any of your friends uh, uh, get quarantined. If you do wind up in quarantine, we do ask you, or, or if you know, if you uh, really all this year, we ask you to answer your phone if it rings, because it could be a contact tracer trying to reach you because maybe one of your friends tested positive and they think they spent you know, quite a bit of time with you and, and we're looking out for you and so we're trying to connect with you. Please also be honest with the contact tracers that reach out to you because if, you know, I know it, there can be a temptation 
to, to not report things because you know you don't want to go in quarantine, don't want your friends to be in quarantine, but only by being honest can we um, can we really stop the spread of this illness. And that's what we're committed to doing this year. So uh, we'd appreciate your answering the phone over the course of the semester. Next slide, Henry. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to turn over Melissa Osmond, who heads our health promotion wellness office. Melissa. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. How are you all? My name is Melissa Osmond. I'm the Associate Director for Health Promotion at Lewis and Clark. Um, I am a public health professional by training. And um, some of the things that we do in wellness, health promotion and wellness are listed here. In the age of COVID, I'm um, doing a lot of ca contact tracing and um, case, manage case management when there are cases. We also, this year, will have a, a uh, program with public health ambassadors with, with current students who will serve to help us promote healthy behaviors like wearing your mask, washing your hands. Um, they'll be able to answer questions about some of our, of our ex behavioral expectations. And um, also added to that, we are anticipating that they will be um, helping us to spread the message about how to be safe. Um, when you can't be um, can't maintain distances, uh, we, we all, uh, my office also um, spearheads sexual and interpersonal violence prevention and response. We have a group of trained advocates on campus who are confidential for anybody who's experienced um, interpersonal violence and. Um, and our friends that may have experienced that, we are comp confidential resources. And I think most of you by now have heard of Everify. Uh, I can't see your reactions when, when I do this program live. I see it, some nods usually and sometimes some eye rolling, but um, <laughs> this is a very important ed education modules and um, our office um, administers them. And if you have any questions or concerns about those modules, please contact me. I know some of you have emailed me and I haven't gotten back to you. I will, um, just running a little bit behind. We also do health education workshops and trainings with students. Um, we got a grant to do bystander intervention workshops and um, sexual health workshops. So we'll be doing more of those this, this coming fall. And Lights for seasonal mood problems. Um, if you're on campus and um, it's dark here in the Pacific Northwest, and, and some people experience um, mood, some feeling kind of low during the darkness and in the winter months. So we have lights, little small portable um, UV lights that we rent out from our office, and our office is in Lower Odell Residence, Residence Hall. So you can come and um, rent them for a couple weeks to see if they help, and um, for a lot of students, they do. Next slide, please, Henry. We also have a presence on uh, Instagram, all of wellness services, not just the health promotion office. So these are our um, platforms that we um, post to, and um, I will say we've been a little bit lacking in the posting over the summer, but we'll wrap up again very soon. So I encourage you to um, Follow us, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You won't be disappointed. We've got lots of tips for um, study habits and stress management and, and announcements about um, wellness on campus. And I have an extra A in media, sorry about that. So a little more about our office. Um, we are in Lower Odell and, and Suite um, 012. Generally open between 8.30 and 5, Monday to Friday. That's our email address, and there's the website information. And if you have any questions, please don't, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Margaret Upton. I'm the Director of Health Service. And yes, in the time of COVID, health service is functioning a little bit differently. But I wanted to let you know about our services in general and some of the changes that COVID has had us adapt to. Um, 
Just to let you know, our services are confidential and they're open to all students. It doesn't matter what insurance you have. Um, there are no fees for provider visits, um, but if you have procedures, there can be a charge. We typically bill those to your student account, but we give you um, a ticket so that you can submit it to your insurance. And we'll explain that when you come in. Um, so typically we evaluate and treat illnesses of in and injuries of all kinds. We function kind of as a, a primary care provider here on campus. We do physical exams, usually athletic, well woman travel exams. However, you'll see there, I have on hold. Basically, we're trying to um, minimize well services in um, and do mainly telehealth services through our clinic. We will resume those um, services and if you need things related to wellness exams, we will um, work with you on that. Um, we do have laboratory services here on campus, not just for COVID. Uh, as um, John had mentioned, we do have testing for COVID in a couple different formats, we're hoping. Um, but we also do general lab testing. Um, we can do that based on your doctor's um, orders from home and send the results back there. We just need an order from your provider. Typically, we do administer allergy injections. Um, we will be doing that, but um, that may be a few weeks down the road. There's a process for that. And there is a fee for allergy injection um, on a routine basis. We will have flu shot clinics, and I encourage everybody to get their flu shot this year. Whether you get it here, whether you get it at a pharmacy, we will be having an outside vendor come on site too for flu shots. So there's multiple ways you will get that. But that's gonna be important because differentiating the flu from COVID is something, um, if you've gotten your shot, it may not show up as COVID um, or thinking COVID. Um, prescriptions, we do have a small pharmacy here on campus for some things. And we also e-prescribe to pharmacies that are local, such as Fred Meyer, Safeway, we can go to CVS, wherever. Um, we also do travel consultations and right now they're on hold. Um, we're not sure what travel will be like in the spring. If um, programs go out, we will have those available for students, but right now we're not doing those. Um, Vaccinations, we do have MMR, HPV, meningitis. We have some other vaccines as well, tetanus. Um, so I know all of you needed to complete your um, immunization uh, with MMR. And if you haven't done that, just to let you know, uh, early in September, there'll be a hold on your registration for spring semester if we don't have those. So get those in. Um, we do do STI screenings um, on campus. We refer outside to specialists as well. Uh, next slide, please. So location this year, typically we are in the lower level of Templeton, and that is gonna function as our well clinic this year. We also are gonna have a clinic for individuals who have um, illnesses. Um, particularly symptoms related to COVID. We don't want to mingle well and ill students. Um, our hours are eight to four um, daily. However, all of our appointments um, are going to initiate with a telehealth visit, whether you're sick or whether you're well. So you need to call our office to schedule that. Um, if it is deemed in the telehealth visit that you need an in-person visit, we'll schedule a second appointment for you. Um, as John said, we do have the nurse crisis um, and after hours consultation line, and there is the website for health service. Next slide. 
Okay. So my name is Michelle Curtin, and I'm one of the staff members at the Counseling Service. Um, and the Counseling Service um, is um, basically like the mental health service of the campus. Um, we are actually located right next door to the health service, but we are going to be doing all of our appointments remotely um, during this time. So one of the things to keep in mind is if you would like to visit with us, I would encourage you to please give us a call at 503-768-7160 or just send us an email so that you can ask to schedule a first appointment or just to ask questions about our services. That's the way to basically make contact with us um, rather than actually coming to our physical location. We're gonna ask that you call or email as your way to make your initiation um, or outreach to us. What we do is we offer short-term counseling. Um, students often go through a number of mental health um, issues throughout their lives, actually all of us do. So we are a good resource if you're having issues, for instance, related to depression, anxiety, maybe eating concerns, um, maybe you're going through something traumatic, um, you have family problems or problems with friends. It could be a host of all sorts of different types of issues that result in you feeling emotionally just not yourself and not well. Also, if you feel that you are really um, in a dark place, let's say related to severe depression or maybe having thoughts about hurting yourself or hurting someone else, we would definitely encourage you to reach out to us to get some help. We also offer referrals um, to other places on campus as well as into the community. Um, we consult with students and with staff and faculty as well, and we offer workshops. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4 p.m. Generally, we're closed at, from 12 to 1, but our appointments take place between 8.30 and 4.30. The way that we will have those appointments um, is through um, basically video appointments. It's, um, there's a platform known as Zoom for healthcare, and that's how we will be having our appointments with our, um, our clients or with our students. Um, and the way to initiate all of that would be to call or to email us, and then we'll walk you through what you need to do to be able to get a link to have those appointments. If you call us, it turns out um, usually you'll get a hold of someone if you call during our open hours. If someone is not available, please leave us a message um, and leave a number that we can reach you back at and we will call you back. If you feel that you need to talk to someone right away, especially if you're in urgent um, need of talking to someone or you feel unsafe, we're gonna ask for you to call our um, crisis counseling service, which is available after hours, but they're also available during the day so that you can talk to someone right away. Um, we will respond to your voicemail message as soon as we can. But if you're needing to talk to someone right away and you get a voicemail, feel free to call the after hours number. Um, our services are free except for no-show appointments. And then um, we do have um, some psychiatric appointments available and they have a small charge that's associated with them. But generally your appointments are free. Um, I did take a quick scan into the Q&A and I noticed that someone wanted to know about our services in terms of charges. And in general, all of the appointments are free except for no-shows and those psychiatric appointments. And the way we generally work is um, that you would give us a call, send us an email, and then we would set up a way to communicate with you through video. So I hope that answers that question. But just let us know, email in or call us and we can answer questions more in detail. Um, we offer brief short-term counseling, which means most students come in for about four appointments or so, four to six appointments. If you know right off the bat that you're going to need more or extensive services, we'll help you get connected to a referral off campus so that you can have some consistency in who you see over time so that you can see someone for longer term than what we can provide. I would encourage everyone to check out our website. So we've listed that there on the slide. And then also we've listed um, the website that you would go to to actually fill out some of our paperwork so that you can get things rolling in terms of having an appointment. Um, I believe the counseling, the health service also uses that same Medicat Connect website as well to fill out some of their forms. And then I'll leave you with our after hours number, which is 503-265-7804 as a way to reach out to someone after we're closed or if you're not able to get a hold of us during the day. 
So now I'm going to turn it over to John. Next slide, please. Thank you, Michelle. So um, I wanted to um, uh, also talk about the Office of Case Management, which actually isn't part of wellness services, but is a very important component of supporting the health of students. So um, we have a, a case manager, her name is Amy, uh, and you can see the hours um, that Amy is here during the week. Uh, her services are also free. Um, and I, I apologize that the, the um, the uh, uh, Amy's office location is not accurate here. Actually, sh this year she'll be down in um, in uh, Albany uh, when she's on campus, but she'll she'll be working remotely via telehealth, just like our counselors will for the most part. Amy's focus in the Office of Case Management is helping students find referrals. So I noticed there was a question in the online chat about um, can online students have access to a counselor? So it depends. Uh, our, our counseling staff can can legally provide services to students who are physically located in Oregon. But if you're physically located outside of Oregon, then most of our counseling staff are unable to provide ongoing counseling, but we can always help with referrals. And Amy is an especially good at helping people find referrals, whether those are referrals uh, off campus uh, here in Portland, uh, because a student needs more than we can offer on campus, or sometimes even telehealth uh, services in the state that you're located in if you're studying remotely. So the Office of Case Management is an excellent resource for all kinds of referrals. Uh, next slide, Henry. Um, I do want to acknowledge that sometimes, uh, you know, students will have challenges and they don't come to us as a first step, they come to their friends as a first step, right? And so we ask for all of you, is it really a stressful year? It's been a very stressful summer and it was a stressful spring. So, um, so we know there's, excuse me, we know there's lots of stress going on in the world. Uh, so if you have a friend and, and you know, they're feeling stressed, see if you can help them connect with our resources, talk with your friends, talk with your RA or your area director. You can come in and talk with your co a counselor. Well, you can, you can uh, call in and get a telehealth appointment, right, to talk with a counselor about your friend or in the end, if none of that works and you're really worried about the safety of your friend, we have something called the Welfare Intervention Network. There's the address. I would encourage you to go and learn more about it because um, you know, we wanna keep all of our students safe and sometimes it means uh, you, know, you, you telling somebody at the college about your concern about a friend and so the win is another resource that way. Um, next slide, Henry. Uh, so I'll, I'm going to close with just another comment or two, and then I'll talk, take a couple questions and we'll wrap up. Uh, last thing, student health insurance, I also coordinate that program. Uh, just remember, you're all automatically enrolled in health insurance for the student health insurance, but you can waive out of it if you have coverage that provides access to care in the area in which you're studying. Uh, but, you, but if you have that alternative coverage, uh, it's important that you go online and waive out of the student health insurance coverage by September 14th, because otherwise the charge to your student account will stand. So please be sure and complete the online waiver if you have other health insurance coverage and you don't want student health insurance coverage, you can find the waiver link uh, at that website at the bottom of this slide. And next slide, Henry. So uh, we're gonna take a, just a couple questions as we wrap up, because we did get started a couple of minutes late. Uh, there was a question, um, um, let's see. Uh, is there a certain number of infected students for the school to go completely online? The answer to that question is no. We're gonna be watching a lot of data. We're gonna be looking at the number of tests we're doing, the number of six students that we identify. We're gonna be looking at uh, where the infections are incurring. We're gonna be looking at our number of students in isolation, our number of students in quarantine. So it's a pretty complex equation that we'll be looking at. Um, uh, so, so we'll be watching that very carefully with the senior administration of the college and giving guidance to them about sort of their decision-making. And we certainly want to be able to complete all the way till Thanksgiving uh, entirely uh, in person. Um, and, and, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, so we'll be watching all that data to inform us about any decisions that we might have to make about online courses for the rest of the semester. We are very committed to doing everything we can to in-person instruction this semester. Uh, another question, what happens with our classes if we wind up having to go to quarantine? How do we ensure we don't fall behind? 
So you will have out, if you go, were to go into quarantine, you're gonna have outreach from someone on my staff. Uh, it would be either potentially Melissa, or we're also hiring a, another staff member to do some of that work. And we'll be reaching out to students, talking with them about the, uh, how they can stay engaged academically. Of course, you know, when you can't go to class, it won't feel the same as when you're actually in class. We have a lot of remote learners though this semester who will be keeping up on their classes remotely. So what we'll want you to do in quarantine, to the extent that you feel up to it, um, is, uh, is, is keeping up on your classes via, uh, via your uh, sort of remote learning, just like the other students uh, are doing who are, are studying fully remotely this semester. Uh, let's see. Um, will, uh, gosh, I'm just looking at the other questions here. Um, there's gonna be more than we have time to address. Um, um, I'm, I'm looking at the list. Uh, for, for my fellow presenters, we're not gonna to get to all these questions today. Are there any questions that stand out for you here that you'd like to address before you wrap up? Okay, well, I'm not hearing anything from any of them. Um, uh, um, I'm looking here, Michelle, you've addressed the question about counseling sessions. Uh, I think I've addressed the next two questions. Um, let's see, uh, in terms of scheduling vaccinations, I would recommend a call to the health service and they can talk with you about options for that. Um, in some cases, we are able to prescribe controlled substances, depends on the clinical presentation. Um, I think that's gonna, that's, that addresses most of the questions that have been asked. I know you have additional questions. I'd encourage you to ask them in other presentations or certainly those email addresses that we presented earlier. Uh, you're welcome to send us e uh, your questions to those email addresses too. So um, thank you so much for your time with us today. We hope this information has been helpful. Um, we want to wish you the best for your health and for your academic success this semester, and we hope you'll be in touch if, uh, if you have concerns or have any needs as the semester unfolds. Uh, thanks very much, and we look forward to seeing you around campus. Bye-bye.